To Ukraine now, more than 170,000 Russians are still living in Ukraine, almost two years after their country launched its full-scale invasion. The figures come from the State Migration Service. Some are even fighting in Ukraine's army. But their situation is complicated. Our Ukraine correspondent James Waterhouse now reports. Three women in wartime Ukraine. Bound by their love for the country. Trapped by their links to Russia. Galina was born here in central Ukraine but raised in Russia and has a Russian passport. Her pregnancy is spent stitching t-shirts for the wounded. She speaks Ukrainian, sees herself as Ukrainian. The state considers her to be a Russian. When you go to a city with your documents, they look at you like you're something strange. Changing a passport was difficult even before the war. Now it's just impossible. Galina needs a Ukrainian passport to apply for work, to access free health care and prevent her bank account from being blocked. To get it, she says she needs to go to Russia to surrender her citizenship, but fears she won't make it back. Galina's connection with Ukraine is intertwined, a bond with Maxim, a Ukrainian soldier. They were married in church, but the state won't recognize it because she doesn't have settled status. This is Sergei and Alina, another Russian-Ukrainian union, though theirs was cut short. Alina is fighting for her country. Sergei, a Russian, was fighting against his. After years of trying and failing to get Ukrainian citizenship, he died in combat without it. I think this fight is not over. Ukraine as a state must pay its debt to the one who defended it. I see this as the ultimate injustice to our defenders. Officials in Ukraine told us this is due process and it won't be made easier for Russians. It has been made simpler, they say, for people who've been fighting. Like Anastasia, a Russian combat medic for Ukraine. Since I came here from my first day, I'm dreaming to have a passport, Ukrainian passport. This is what I'm fighting for. Not only for, for freedom, but and for, for my passport. Nobody was asking my passport and my nationality when I was, was working. For sure, my colleagues, they know. Whereas Galina remains in a vulnerable limbo. She gets a brief moment to call her husband, who's fighting on the front. If something happened to your husband, what would that mean for your family, given your situation? I'm afraid to even think about it. It's very scary. It's very hard. James Waterhouse, BBC News. Central Ukraine.